Hey, what's up guys? Aaron Be here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2026 mod career mode. This is episode number five today for the Monaco Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Spanish GP, the Battle of the Bulls, Lamborghini versus Red Bull, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. A Titanic scrap with Fernando Alonso and also our teammate Pierre Gasly in tandem as well as we took the fight to the Red Bull. Unfortunately, though, unfortunately, uh, it didn't end in the best possible way. Uh, you know, obviously, if you watch the episode, you'll know why. It was going so, so well, and it's happened many times on this game at the highest point where I feel like, okay, we're controlling the race, we're doing well. Lady Luck and the Formula One gods come crashing down on us as we were leading the race and actually looking really good. You know, we got away from the cars chasing us and we ended that race with a fuel pump issue and it was a DNF. We're going to have to bounce back here at Monaco and it's going to be a tricky place. You know, qualifying has not been my strongest suit this season nor really the last season. Monaco is the most crucial qualifying of the entire race of the calendar. So uh, we're going to just kind of see how it goes basically. But things looking very similar in terms of the R&D chart. Then most teams plateauing into this episode. You can see it's all rather close in that top back. McLaren, Red Bull, ourselves, even Mercedes and Aston, although we haven't seen them really show their hand completely. Uh, Ferrari and Alpine a bit closer. And then down below, you've got Audi and Haas close together as they try and break away from the bottom and try and bridge that gap. And they are doing so. You know, if they, if they have one more set of upgrades like they have done from Abu Dhabi into Spain, then actually, you know, it will only leave maybe Andretti and Williams down there and then it's up to them to also make some upgrades. I'm really hoping by the end of the season, all 11 teams are going to be close together because that will be really quite something to see. But uh, yeah, the first episode of the series back after, obviously, you may have seen in a, in a community post, I've been away for 10 days at uh, in Las Vegas for the Grand Prix and some filming prior. So this is the first episode that we've got when I'm back. I actually recorded this before I went out to Las Vegas, but I'm commentating it on the day I've landed back. So uh, if I sound tired, it's because I am. And if I end up sounding like Daniel Ricciardo or some other drivers, uh, delirious as they were in Las Vegas after their, their practice, uh, you know, FB2 very late on into 4 a.m., then you know why. So uh, any slip-ups, any uh, commentary mishaps, I'm going to put down to that. But the show must go on, and I'm looking forward to giving you guys another episode in this series. And what a race to come back to the Monaco Grand Prix. A tough one as well, to be fair, because... You know, as the F1 games have gone on through the last couple of years, the AI, they've gotten so much better at defending, let's say, and just kind of holding their line, that Monaco really has become very similar to real life, where it's difficult to overtake. So this Saturday is crucial for us. So we have to be getting through into the top 10 shooter and then hopefully doing well there. First and foremost, just getting through into Q2. P9 at the moment, Gasly third place. Bit ominous to have a McLaren 1-2 there. Liam Lawson ahead of Oscar P. Astry, but, uh, you know, Q1, obviously, it's hard to really tell the true pecking order as the track will get quicker and quicker as you go in. And Monaco, especially, as a driver, for us, you know, you dial into it more, you get more into a rhythm, you're able to take a few more risks, maybe sliding the car around, getting close to the walls and trying to find that extra time. But uh, Alonso going quickest of all at the moment early on in Q2. Obviously, he uh, benefited massively from my DNF at Spain to take his home victory and now going into this race leads the championship of course which is quite exciting thankfully it's a very very solid lap a lot closer to the lead man which is Piastri this time in the other McLaren and it's a checkerboard of McLaren and ourselves uh, Fernando Alonso through Schumacher through his one Ferrari makes it in Verstappen surprisingly is the other Ferrari that doesn't make it in he's down in P13 and only one Alpine of Ocon slips through both Aston are through the, so showing maybe a little bit more promise Mercedes though unfortunately not where they're going to want to be but this is where it all really matters now the top 10 shootout the sun's come down a little bit the shadows are out in Monaco it's time to concentrate for two 
flying laps. We've got two soft compounds left uh, to use because we only got we got through on one flying lap in both sessions, thankfully. So we do have two runs at this. The first lap, it's it's a tidy lap. I think we could definitely take a few more risks in sector two. I think out of the tunnel, you're going to see as we go on to that second lap. I think we're going to gain a bit more time on that second run. The first run, just a banker as the checkered flag falls and getting very close to the wall on the left both times on the entry and exit of that complex of corners and through to back as well just trying to plant the power as, uh, as quickly as we can through that left hander and then really chucking it through swimming pool to gain a further tenth to nearly be four tenths up then make a little bit of an error to be honest because I was almost scared about putting that in the wall as we went into Larascas lost a bit of time there ultimately going to be about 3.7 tenths gained on the second flying lap that is going to be good enough not for pole position but at least the front row Piastri though the reigning champion on pole position for Monaco but I'm actually pretty damn chuffed with second place considering the qualifyings we've had so far this season that is the qualifying we needed Piastri though two tenths ahead of us so he is really the man in form it would seem around this circuit but the fact we're second place gives us a massive chance just to try and jump him at the start go round the outside because we'll be on the left hand side of the grid Gasly's there in third place as well so he's going to be close by Fernando Alonso unfortunately only goes uh, as good as P6 his teammate has beaten him to P4 Lando Norris there and uh, down below while well, Schumacher I think has done pretty well to out qualify the Alpine and one of the Aston Martins but to be fair both Astons in the top 10 is impressive enough to be honest for them as a team but for us we've only got one eye on this it's revenge not against Piastri but revenge in terms of not having that win at Spain I want to try and get the win at Monaco um, we just need we need to have a good start I feel like all, all, almost you know how the phrase goes you can't win the race in the first corner or the first lap truly the way Monaco is now in the F1 games like in real life I, I think you really can maybe win it in the first corner and on the first lap so let's go to the grid psych ourselves up for this front row start and let's see if we can try and convert this A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word. That's how Mr Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. The astonishing Circuit de Monaco is, for all intents and purposes, virtually unchanged since its inaugural race back in 1929. The faster cars of today ensure the 19 corners past the casino and along the seafront remain as thrilling as ever. A 2.1 mile lap here takes us around an entire country, yet never more than inches from the race ending barriers. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Oscar Piastri lines up on pole position and the owner driver alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Norris, Liam Lawson, Fernando Alonso, Albon, Mick Schumacher, Ocon, Sonoda, Russell, Ricardo, Verstappen, Theo Porcher, Sainz, Leclerc, Bottas, Drogovic, Perez, Joe, Holkenberg, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. and it's fantastic to have you with us here. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. We've been in a similar position before here at Monaco on this very game, you know, a few seasons ago, uh, wasn't it? You know, when we were teammates with Daniel Ricciardo, we tried to go for glory and locked it up into turn one. Got that kind of thought in my mind, you know, as much as I want to get Piastri, we also need to make sure we don't lock up, we don't fluff this and put this in the wall uh, because ultimately then we're going to throw away points. But I so desperately want to make up what happened in Spain. We're going to move our car and point it 
uh, well, towards Piastri's line, but more so just point it straight at that break zone where we're aiming for. And we just need to try and get the launch uh, as good as we can get it. But we're going to be waiting here a long or while on the front rows. The final cars line up. So we're just psyching ourselves up here for the Monaco Grand Prix. The jewel in the Formula 1 calendar. But it could all be decided by this first corner as we go to five red lights. And we're underway. Piastri gets a little bit of wheel spin. It's an okay start for us. Can we go to the outside? No. Piastri does so well to awkwardly place his car. And ultimately, we just don't have the room to go around the outside. I really thought we could maybe just squeeze in. But ultimately, our start just wasn't as good as I needed it to be. Piastri actually did have a bit of a poor getaway. Uh, you saw on his rear, uh, rear left tyre, a bit of wheel spin there. But uh, we just didn't get the uh, oomph launch that we've had so many times so far on this game. Ultimately, having to settle down for second place. Piastri re remains in first off pole position. Gasly third. Then it's Lando Norris from Lawson. Alonso, Albon. On Schumacher, Ocon, Russell, the top 10. Sonoda has dropped down outside the top 10 as there's a side-by-side -side moment going on for Leclerc, the home favourite, way down in P17. It's a bit of a disaster and headache uh, qualifying and race so far for the Mercedes team and for Leclerc. That's just not what you want to see. He's battling Alfa, Alfa Romeo Haas for what was P17 there, the wooden spoon really well and truly uh, as we look to now try and chase after Piastri. But let's look at a replay, a bunch of replays from that start because, okay, it actually looks like a better start there for us from Gasly's on board. If you really compare how close we got to Piastri, Gasly, though, himself also got pretty close. I think Gasly actually got an even better start than me. So out of the three of us, he's actually come out the better. And he actually almost, almost made things very awkward for ourselves as our teammate was on the inside of us. And, uh, you know, that you know, rear end shot from Piastri just showing how well he did to squeeze us out. Fernando Alonso managing to go around the outside of the uh, Aston Martin Honda as Schumacher watches on and then Verstappen outside the top 10. Had to have a good start. He has done and he's jumped one position at least there into turn one. So a few other cars were able to make the overtake I was uh, unfortunately not able to make. And then this was the uh, move or the start of the battle that we saw with Leclerc versus Felipe Dragovic then, of course. Uh, new into Formula 1 uh, in this season, in this series, on this game. And Dragovic does so well. I mean, look at this. An incredible scrap here as the two of them. Uh, they make just a tiny bit of contact, but they've kept it side by side through that entire section of Monaco pretty damn well there. So some really uh, good fighting, actually, for some other cars. But alas for us, no fighting. Really just more keeping up with Piastri at this stage as we set the fast half of the Grand Prix on lap three, uh, or, or lap two rather, onto three, but you saw we went a little bit wide at turn one, so it's that caveat of pushing hard and then little mistake when you're pushing a bit too much and you can kind of undo all the good work you've done, but so far we are now getting into a rhythm of this race with a heavier fuel, of course. Remember our Monaco, very different to what we had on Saturday. Uh, it's just this exit off the final corner there. You can see I'm getting close and then with DRS, I just can't keep up with Piastri at that final corner. The McLaren, as we saw last season, just has some really good acceleration, great traction. Again, the same thing through into the tunnel. I feel like we're getting close, and then we go through the tunnel, and Piastri's pulled out a tenth or two on me. Again here, you know, into this corner, I think even better entry, and the exit's pretty good, but still just not enough to make the move. You know, we have plenty of battery to deploy, but... If I, if I tried to die a bomb from here, it would just be wishful thinking. But we're keeping it as close as we can to Piastri's rear end here through the last sector. Could we try and set up a move at Raskas? No, doesn't look likely there. That wash of understeer through to back was deadly. If I kept my nose in there, maybe there would have been a chance on this lap to try and set up an infamous La Raskas move that I always love around Monaco. But... Yeah, it's either, it's either oversteer, not enough traction, or it's it's dirty air and understeer, as you saw there at the back. Is, uh, it's still then going to be Piastri, myself, uh, on lap 10 from Gasly, Norris, Lawson, Alonso, P6. So Alonso uh, remaining ahead of Albon. Schumacher doing well to keep up with him, actually, to be fair. And the Ferrari is Ocon and Russell uh, close together in no man's land is uh, Yuki Tsunoda. And then Verstappen, a bit of a gap uh, from him to, uh, to the Aston Martin on the second one of the day. And as we go go through. Leclerc still having an awful time of it at his home Grand Prix to check in a, in, a, in a sandwich of the Alfa Romeo Haas and then down below obviously the usual suspects of Williams and Andretti, the bottom two teams in the R&D chart as on lap 14 I'm, I'm looking at my pit window 
Lap 19, that's, uh, that's a long way here, and it's a lot of frustrating laps to go, maybe, if I was to pit on lap 19 to 31, apparently, is the pit window, because, again, we get close. Look how close we are there. We're so, so close. Three tens off. This might be the closest we've been. We're under now two tens nearly to Piastri, but as we pull out a little bit to the inside, we're just not there. Like, like it's, that was close, close as we've ever been, but still not close enough to make that dive. Uh, versus Piastri. So, so far, 15 laps of Monaco. It's just been intense pressure from us, lap after lap, keeping Piastri honest. And look at the gap to Gasly. Myself and Piastri, we're on another level here. Nine seconds out of Gasly. I'm calling it, though. Lap 17, two laps earlier than my pit window. I'm coming in because I actually reckon in clean air, we have the pace to undercut Piastri because you can see we're, we're all, anytime we're losing out to Piastri, it's when we're right underneath his rear wing. So genuinely, maybe that dirty air from the McLaren is, is making the difference there. So I'm going to, you know, do what, you know, that you, you, all strategists hope to do in Monaco, get ourselves into some clean air as we're going to come out just... Uh, well, ahead of uh, Schumacher, just behind Albon. But to be honest, I think Albon's going to be so much slower than us. I think we should be able to clear him. And then we've got a good amount of clean air ahead of Albono because there's uh, five, uh, 6 6.7 to Fernando Alonso. And that clean air... That driving we do in that clean air could make the difference versus Piastri, who's going to continue on now. And we know how good this car is on the hard compound attire, which we've gone to as well. So that's another factor in this. We know the My Team car is great on the hards, but I need to pass Albon ASAP. And he's struggling through this corner. And it's a very unorthodox move, but a great one nonetheless. Very satisfying to the inside just before the tunnel to get up into P6 and crucially into a pocket of clean air that we can now go and do some work. But look at Schumacher. Mick Schumacher on the outside. He was on the inside of the tunnel. They were side by side and they're now they're still going at it on the exit but Albon's going to remain ahead in P7 but Schumacher giving it a good old go as uh, just like in real life it, we're seeing a rarity of you know some moves being made in the latter stages uh, or the middle part of this race rather as Piastri still leads the way and he's going to keep on going to that pit window and all the while we're gaining on Alonso and therefore Piastri as well with the undercut as we come down the main straight Piastri still in the pit lane as we close up to Fernando Alonso we have jumped Piastri and as long as there's not another pit stop to make we're ahead of him now as we go to the inside of Fernando Alonso we've got a massive amount of marbles on the front left tire but we make a move on the outside at Casino Square to get up into P3 pretty damn awesome move we didn't make an overtake directly on circuit on Piastri for the lead but whilst we overtook him in the pit strategy we did make a pretty damn tasty move worthy of the race lead on Fernando Alonso at least as we're into third place ahead of us Lawson and Gasly they'll pit eventually but that's it that, that, that that's it and unless there's not a pit stop to make we have jumped Piastri. Now, it's just about 19 laps remaining. Keeping it cool, keeping it calm. Overtaking Lawson, because such is the tire wear difference now on those mediums versus hard. So, uh, I mean, I've been speaking all race about not being able to out-traction Piastri's McLaren. There, out-tractioning Lawson was a piece of piss, really. So, just showing the tire wear difference, really, and why we were able to jump Piastri so much is because we just made that early call. But like I said, now it's about soaking up the pressure of being in the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix for 18 more laps. And also, because we pit so much earlier, we will be facing tyre wear, more tyre wear, than Piastri and any people chasing at the end of this race, which will be something to worry about potentially right at the end. But right now, lap 25, uh, four laps later, we're going so quick. Piastri's going so quick. I mean, he's, you know, 15, was it? 15, 16 seconds ahead of Lando Norris, who unfortunately has jumped our teammate. So Lando up into third place. But we're now lapping the Andretti of Logan Sargent in P21. So me and Piastri are in a different level earlier in the race and continuing to be. As uh, he, you can see, he's right there at the bottom of the hill. So both of us are going to be starting to lap a load of these cars that are just a, a, just a, a much slower rate, really. It's just been, I think, honestly, it's kind of me and Piastri pushing each other to go so much quicker because you know Gasly's in the same car as me Lawson is as well but they're, they're not on the same pace because they've not been you know pushing each other for that P2 
you know, it really galvanizes you, motivates you to go even quicker as we see Verstappen up to P10, to be fair, uh, behind Schumacher P9, but 13, 14 second gap from Verstappen to Schumacher. So Verstappen really still not getting to grips with his new Scuderia Ferrari car this season compared to Schumacher. And uh, he's actually having, he's actually holding up a bit of a train behind him, to be honest, which, you, which we might catch at some point in this race if we keep going at the pace we are. And so far, the pace isn't letting up that much, to be honest, between myself and Piastri in terms of him catching us. The gap is, it was maybe three seconds, is now down to two. So maybe he is starting to be a bit quicker with the tyre wear in there. But then I say that, lap 30, the gap's now up to 4.4 as we've got through traffic a little bit quicker than he has so far. But we're now catching a lot of traffic here of Joe Guan Yu, but then further ahead, there's a lot of cars quite close together. And it's giving me 2011 Monaco vibes. It's some time ago as we lap Leclerc at his home race. Bit painful for him. Uh, but we lock up into turn one and Leclerc comes back at us on the soft compound tie. He switchbacks us and he's back ahead. He unlaps himself. So that's the thing I need to really be careful. As much as I'm enjoying this pace, lapping cars, um, if I make a mistake like that, you know, if we locked up any longer, that would have been an absolute howler of a crash into turn one. But as I was saying, it's giving me 2011 Monaco vibes some time ago, but cast your minds back. It was, you know, Sebastian Vettel leading in the Red Bull being chased down by Jensen Button and Fernando Alonso, the McLaren and Ferrari, and they caught a load, a gaggle of lapped cars. And that's exactly what we're doing now because it's still about 3.4 to Piastri behind. But look at all these cars. We have to try and get past under blue flags. And it's all uh, you know, uh, headed by Max Verstappen struggling with that Ferrari of his as, as we lap the second Mercedes of the day. Really not great for the Silver Arrows, but we lose time now to Piastri. 2.8 the gap is. So this is the thing with traffic at Monaco. Even though they've got blue flags, it is holding us up. It's closing me and Piastri up, but it's now just a question of, you know, is, is you know, will something happen to go in Piastri's favour or can we just keep it cool, make the overtakes when when you know when they're given to us like that and hopefully no one gets in our way really as the gap stabilizes back to 3.6 as obviously now Oscar has to make those same moves on those same lapped cars but this really is big 2011 Monaco vibes right here as we now catch up to Ricardo and Verstappen in a battle of their own Ricardo so close to Verstappen he's unfortunately gonna have to give up the fight versus Verstappen for now as he lets me by very easily at the tunnel. Thank you very much to him. And I'm sure he'll be hoping that Verstappen jumps out of the way of myself and he can close back up to that fight with the Ferrari. But into to back, Verstappen on the inside very awkwardly parks it at the apex and doesn't let us by immediately. And he almost, he makes us go the long way round. He almost kind of puts me into a mistake or I put it in the wall. We had to cut the curve a little bit to go on the outside. Verstappen trying a move on the outside of Raska. Ricardo's on the inside. What is Verstappen doing? Verstappen ignoring blue flag etiquette and putting up a fight versus us, making us go the long way round through the chicane at the swing pool, um, or just before that, the high speed chicane, and then actually try to make a move on the outside of Raskas and cause a little bit of chaos with traffic at, uh, at that corner as they all kind of concertinaed up. Thankfully, though, we do get ahead, and now we've got breathing room just to concentrate on the last couple of laps and concentrate. We're going to need to because the tyres are going off a little bit and hitting the marbles as well is not going to help as we have a massive uh, snap of oversteer there as we're now uh, 1.4 to Piastri. So the gaps come down with that mistake, and it goes on all the way to the last lap of the Grand Prix. It's nearly going to be just a second. It is nine tenths to a second now between ourselves and Piastri. So over the course of the stint, Piastri's been getting quicker with his better tyres on him, but it's not going to be enough. And thankfully for us, we are going to hold this out on the last lap of the Monaco GP. It wasn't the win at Spain that we wanted, but it's revenge for that DNF against the F1 gods. And we're going to be the masters of Monaco in 2026. It's the first win of the season for us. It's our first win for Lamborghini. 
and it's, it was done in some style. Myself and Piastri on a different planet compared to everyone else. The pace was unreal, and I mean, kudos to him. Firm handshakes for having that sort of pace and keeping me honest the entire race, to be honest. It's the one that everyone wants to win, and they've only gone and done it. What a fantastic result here at Monaco. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Welcome, then, to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. Getting this win under our belt is very important, just for the confidence levels. Also, to be honest, you know, it was, it was, it was due from the last Grand Prix, so this is the proof in the pudding that the car is there. And, you know, in, in the R&D chart, and in the race terms, we are so much closer to McLaren and, and that top fight than we were at this point last season. So this is why it gives me the confidence that we can go on and build on this and close up the, the championship right now. Because, of course, we're still not going to be near the lead at the moment because of the DNF we had, because of the lower positions we got in Las Vegas, uh, you know, for example, in the earlier races. But the win here today versus Piastri and then both of us nearly 15 seconds ahead of the next car, which is the Red Bull of Lando Norris. Gasly comes home in P4, pretty solid for the team. Uh, he still leads us in P4 in the championship. We're P5, 20 points off the top, even with that win. So still work to do. Piastri now takes the lead of the championship. Four points only to Alonso and then two to Liam Lawson. It's all still rather close, but it's still so early in the season. Five rounds gone. It's, it, it's hard to call, but there's a pattern forming that McLaren is still maybe the team to beat. Although saying that, obviously we became the constructors' champions last season, so we're, we, you know, we're, we're, and myself and Gasly, so equally matched, still doing a mega job. But the difference is this season, Liam Lawson also doing a mega job for McLaren on the other side of the garage for Piastri. So it could could actually be a much tougher fight in the constructors versus McLaren. But today it's all about that win and all all about us as an individual. We got that win and we made up for Spain and we did it in some style, guys. If you have enjoyed that, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.